Welcome back to ControlX Engineering, and today we'll start a brand new series on my channel. In this series, we'll talk about electrical design related topics pertaining to industrial control systems. So let's get started. Today, we'll talk about an important topic in industrial control systems, SCCR or short circuit current rating. Whether you're designing an industrial control panel, working on power distribution systems, or just curious about safety in electrical installations, understanding SCCR is crucial. Stick around to learn what SCCR is, what are the relevant electrical codes and regulations pertaining to it, how it's calculated, and some tips on how to improve it. Finally, we'll look at some real-world examples for simple control panels and try to determine SCCR for publishing on the nameplate. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is SCCR? As stated earlier, SCCR stands for Short Circuit Current Rating, and it represents the maximum current a component or equipment can safely withstand without causing damage or a safety hazard during a short circuit event. In simple terms, it tells you how much current the equipment can handle if something goes wrong. Exceeding this limit could result in fires, explosions, or projectile hazards. It is a critical specification, especially in industrial electrical systems, where large amounts of uh, power are involved. You'll find a CCR rating listed on components inside the control enclosure like um, disconnects, uh, switches, circuit breakers, fuse holders, and many other components. So why is this important? Imagine a short circuit occurs on one of the components. If your equipment can't handle the surge, it can lead to catastrophic failures like fires or even explosions. Several standards and regulations relate to short circuit current rating to ensure safety and compliance in electrical systems. Here are some key ones. The National Electrical Code. Uh, it is a regionally adopted standard for safe installation of electrical wiring and equipment in the United States. It is part of the National Fire Code series uh, published by the NFPA or National Fire Associ Protection Association. Article 110.10. .10. This section requires that electrical equipment must be suitable for the intended use and that it must have an SCCR that meets or exceeds the available fault current at that location. Article 409. Uh, Article 409 was added to the NEC in 2005 uh, to ensure that proper uh, equipment ratings and markings are in place for safe installation and application of industrial control panels. Uh, this article covers industrial control panels intended for general use and operating at 1,000 volts um, or less. It states that an industrial control panel shall not be installed where the available short circuit current um, exceeds the equipment SCCR. This means that an industrial control panel is required to be marked with an SCCR rating and the available short circuit current at the control panel and the date the short circuit current calculation was performed shall be documented and should be made available to those authorized to inspect the installation. Um, in short, um, Article 409 requires all industrial control panels to be marked with the SCCR and the article references UL 508A specifically supplement SB4 as an approved method of calculating the SCCR of a panel. The UL standard is a set of safety requirements and testing procedures developed by Underwriters Laboratories, or UL for short. Uh, this is a global uh, private safety company headquartered in the United States. Uh, these standards cover a wide range of products from household appliances to industrial equipment and aims to ensure the, that the products are safe for consumers and the environment. By adhering to UL standards, manufacturers can demonstrate that their products meet safety and quality standards. UL508A is a safety standard pertaining to industrial control panels. It outlines the requirement for electrical safety, mechanical strength, and fire resistance in these panels. Key aspects covered include component selection, wiring methods, grounding, and SCCR ratings. In simpler terms, UL508A ensures that the control panels are built safely and reliably, uh, minimizing risks like electrical shocks, fires, and equipment damage. Uh, UL67 is a safety standard covering electrical panel boards, also known as distribution boards. It specifies that panel boards must be marked with their appropriate SCCR. Uh, this information is essential for proper installation and coordination with other electrical equipment in the system. UL67 also covers a wide range of aspects related to the design and construction of uh, panel boards, including requirements for insulation wire, uh, wiring methods, grounding, and overcurrent protection to prevent electrical shocks and fires. Uh, the International Electrotechnical Commission, or IEC, is an international standards organization that prepares and publishes international standards for all electrical, electronic, and related technologies. IEC standards cover a vast range of fields within electrotechnology. The IEC standard for industrial control panels uh, provides a comprehensive framework for ensuring the 
safety of machinery, including the electrical safety of control panels. In particular, the IEC 60947 is a comprehensive series of standards covering low voltage switch gear and control gear. Uh, now, specific parts of um, this standard deal with various components like circuit breakers, contactors, and other devices, as well as addresses short circuit current ratings uh, within its scope. Uh, these parts um, address the SCCR of different specific devices they cover, ensuring that they can safely interrupt expected short circuit currents during fault conditions. OSHA standards are a set of rules and regulations established by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, uh, in the United States. Uh, these standards are designed to protect personnel from workplace hazards and ensure safe working conditions. While OSHA doesn't explicitly specify SCCR requirements, it does have regulations that indirectly address the importance of considering SCCR. For example, uh, this subsection references the NEC in its regulations, uh, which implies adherence to SCCR requirements for workplace safety. The NFPA, or National Fire Protection Association, provides crucial guidelines for the safe design, installation, and operation of electrical control panels. Uh, these standards cover various aspects, including electrical safety, short circuit current ratings, wiring methods, grounding, and the selection of suitable components to minimize the risks and ensure reliable performance. In particular, NFPA 70E uh, focuses on electrical safety in the workplace and references the importance of SCCR in mitigating uh, arc flash hazards. The Canadian Electrical Code, or CEC, which is similar to the NEC, emphasizes the critical importance of considering SCCR in the selection, installation, and operation of electrical equipment to ensure safety and reliability. The CEC addresses short circuit current rating, or SCCR, in several key areas. Rule 12-004 emphasizes that electrical equipment must be suitable for the location and conditions of use, which inherently include the ability to withstand the available fault current. Rule 12-104 requires that equipment including switchboards, switchgear, and panel boards have an SCCR not less than the available fault current. And Rule 12-204 addresses um, industrial control panels, requiring them to be marked with their SCCR unless they contain only control circuit components. The CSA Group, formerly the Canadian Standards Association, uh, develops and maintains standards for products, services, processes, and systems in Canada. CSA sta uh, standards cover a wide range of areas, including electrical safety, building codes, and environmental protection. Various standards under this series, such as CSA uh, C22-2, uh, number 286, specify SCCR determination criteria and considerations for the ability of industrial equipment to withstand short circuit currents. It also requires marking of equipment with the, their SCCR values. Each province may have its own electrical safety reg regulations that references the CC and other standards. It is essential to check local regulations for specific requirements regarding SCCR. Local. Adhering to these regulations ensures not only the safety and reliability of the electrical systems, but also protects um, against the potential hazards and legal issues. Always consult the most um, current codes and standards for any updates or changes. Now that we know the importance of the short circuit current rating for an industrial control panel, to comply with the regulations, the SCCR value must be clearly marked and labeled on the equipment nameplate. Here's an industrial control panel with necessary markings and safety labels. Um, this is a typical equipment nameplate showing the necessary information about the equipment as well as the short circuit current rating for this control panel. Now that we know what SCCR is, uh, let's talk about how it's calculated. SCCR is determined by analyzing the uh, ratings of all the components in an assembly, such as our industrial control panel. Uh, each device inside the assembly, like breakers, contactors, overloads, etc., uh, will have their own individual short circuit current rating. The overall SCCR for the entire panel is based on the weakest link, meaning the component with the uh, lowest short circuit current rating determines the SCCR of the entire assembly. According to UL 508A Supplement SB, um, there are four basic steps to follow to calculate the SCCR rating of the entire control panel and to make it compliant with standards. Um, step one is to look at the individual uh, power circuit components in each branch circuit according to SB 4.2. Step two is to look for current limiting components to possibly modify SCCR according to SB 4.3. Uh, determine the overall SCCR of the panel according to the explanation in SB 4.4. And finally, step four is to add the SCCR marking to panel according to SB 5.1.
consider this simple circuit diagram. From left to right, we have power entering the control cabinet through the mains disconnect. We have overcurrent protection fuses and power distribution blocks to distribute the incoming power to the two branch circuits. Each branch is protected by a breaker, and finally we have the motor starter controlling the two load motors. Let's start with step one, identify and obtain the SCCR of individual power circuit components. Power circuit components are generally required to have um, short circuit ratings uh, published. However, certain components such as voltmeters, EMI filters, power resistors, etc., are exempt from these requirements. Paragraph SB4.2.1 lists additional components that do not require SCCR. The short circuit um, ratings of components can be obtained from the manufacturer's tested rating, which is usually published on the component label or packaging or uh, their data sheets. Another option is to use the values published in table SB4.1. Now, this table provides the UL standard default short circuit current ratings that you can use when your device is not marked or data is not provided by the manufacturer. Table SB4.1 um, lists the default SCCR ratings for components that are not tested or marked. Here we have identified the SCCR values for the various components using the above methods. Step two is to identify the current limiting components in the circuit. Uh, the two um, most important attributes to consider are uh, peak let through current and interrupt rating. According to paragraph SB 4.3.2, all of the downstream uh, branches have to be rated above the peak let through current um, of the feeder breaker. And the rating of the branch uh, protective device or combination controller must be equal to or greater than the available short circuit um, current for the feeder circuit breaker. Uh, what this means is if all the downstream branches have an SCCR greater than the peak let through current, use the smallest of either the branch SCCR rating or the feeder's interrupt rating. In step three, now we can determine the overall SCCR of our control panel. According to paragraph SB 4.4.1, we can use the smallest SCCR of all load side power circuit components of a branch circuit. Finally, we arrive at step four. Paragraph SB 5.1 states that the nameplates of all industrial control panels must have the SCCR and the maximum voltage listed. Um, so next, let's uh, look at a few examples. Um, please note that these examples are taken from an Alan Bradley publication shown here. Uh, this figure shows the wiring diagram for motor control circuit with breakers, overload protection devices, and contactors on the 480 volt side, as well as 120 volts and 24 volt circuits after the step down transformer. Uh, steps one and two are to identify the component SCCRs and current limiting devices. Um, as per UL 508A, paragraph SB 4.2.1, this section is exempt from SCCR. Per UL 508A paragraph SB 4.4.2, the lowest component um, SCCR determines the overall panel SCCR, uh, which in this case is motor one circuit with CB1 and contactor one having short circuit ratings of 5K. So the panel SCCR is 5K at 480 volts. Uh, let's look at ex another example. Uh, in this circuit, the main breaker CB10 and power distribution block PDB10 have a combined manufacturer uh, rating of 35K as well as CB5 has a rating of 35K. It looks like all the sub-circuit components have SCCR values of 65K. Um, like last time, this circuit is exempt from SCCR. The overall uh, SCCR is limited by the manufacturer's rating for CB5 and CB10 with PDB10. So this panel's SCCR value will be 35K at 480 volts. Here's another circuit uh, with SCCR values identified as before. However, CB10 is UL listed as um, current limiting with 18K peak let through current uh, per manufacturer provided curves. Uh, the let through current is the maximum instantaneous or peak current that passes through a protective device. Since all downstream devices have uh, ratings exceeding the 18K peak let through current, the overall SCCR is based on the feeder breaker. Therefore, the per paragraph SB 4.4.2, the panel SCCR will be 65K at 480 volts. Let's look at one last example. Uh, this one involves an isolation transformer. As we can see, the main circuit breaker CB9 has a rating of 65K and all components on the transformer secondary have lower SCCR. Uh, since the transformer limits the current below most of the device ratings to 1.7K at 480 volts, the panel SCCR in this example is 65K. Now let's talk about how we can improve SCCR ratings in a system. Here are a few techniques. Uh, use of current limiting devices, so adding current limiting devices, um, fuses, or circuit breakers can reduce the amount of fault current that reaches components downstream. These devices can interrupt the fault current as fast as within less than half a cycle, protecting the other devices.
you can upgrade components uh, by replacing low rated components with ones that have higher SCCR ratings, uh, which is an obvious way to improve the overall system rating. Um, using tested combinations, sometimes manufacturers, they uh, provide tested combination of components uh, that have higher combined SCCR than the individual parts. So using these um, can obviously improve the overall SCCR without needing to replace components, as we saw in example two. And uh, finally, by proper layout and conductor sizing, uh, believe it or not, how you wire your system can affect your, the SCCR. Minimizing conductor length and ensuring proper sizing reduces impedances, uh, which helps in managing fault currents. Uh, to make this more concrete, imagine you're designing an industrial control panel for a factory that's connected to a high power distribution system. If you don't calculate the SCCR properly, the panel could be exposed to a fault current uh, beyond its uh, rating, causing a major failure. But by upgrading critical components and using uh, current limiting fuses, you can safely handle even higher short circuit currents and keep the system running safely. We generally want higher CCR for electrical systems and components. Here's why. Uh, greater fault tolerance. A higher CCR means the equipment can withstand larger fault currents without failing. Uh, this is especially important in systems where there is potential for higher short circuit currents, such as industrial environments with large power supplies. Increased safety, um, higher SCCR rating, rated equipment can better handle fault conditions, uh, reducing the risk of fires, explosions, or electrical failure in the event of a short circuit. Uh, regulatory compliance, uh, many standards and codes uh, require specific SCCR levels for certain installations. Having a higher SCCR ensures your system complies with the various safety standards that we discussed today. And fire future proofing. Electrical systems may experience changes in load and capacity over time, so a higher SCCR gives you more flexibility for future expansions or upgrades, as the system can you know, safely accommodate higher fault occurrence. So aiming for higher SCCR is generally beneficial for the system reliability and uh, safety compliance. And um, that wraps up today's video on SCCR. Uh, to sum up, SCCR is essential for ensuring safety, compliance, and reliability in electrical systems. Understanding how you calculate and improve SCCR can save lives, protect property, and keep systems running smoothly. If you found this video helpful, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all things electrical engineering. Drop any questions or future video suggestions in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Uh, that's all for today's video. If you have any questions or suggestions about today's video, please leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future tutorials. As always, thank you for watching and keep innovating.